Hi there, crew. Welcome to an update on the Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Tuesday, September 17th, about 9 a.m. Mountain Time, uh, 5 a.m. over in Hawaii. There was a small eruption uh, on the Middle East Rift Zone yesterday that occurred. We couldn't see the signal exactly because uh, the clouds and it was dark still, but later that day they got a helicopter up and were able to see that a eruption did occur uh, Sunday evening local time between about 9 to 10 and there were two fissures that were producing that lava as you can see on the map here. Here's Nepal Crater in the middle uh, east rift zone. Pu'uo'o is off to the right or to the east. Um, and so you can see the, the small patches of lava that these produced. They were very short-lived eruptions. The lava did not flow very far, but I'll show you some videos and photos of that. Uh, the lava flows only extended a few, um, you know, hundreds of feet or so away from the vent area. Another map showing it here. Uh, so you can see the yellow line on the big map. All the purple are all the older flows from older eruptions. Again, Puo over here on the right. Mount Ulu here. Here's the chain of craters road, which is currently closed. And then a little inset map here, which shows that fissure, really two distinct fissures, and then the patches of lava shown in pink here that erupted. And then some numbers uh, here in terms of, you know, the length of the fissures, uh, the, the flow extent, and then estimated volume. But all, all in all, a very, very small eruption. Um, but one that actually resumed again last night around 6 p.m. local time. So basically we had an eruption Sunday evening between 9 and 10 that opened up these small fissures in the Middle East Rift Zone. Uh, during the day everything was pretty quiet maybe except for some gases and then that eruption resumed uh, last night about 6 p.m. local time and as it's still quite early in Hawaii and dark uh, there's not a whole lot to see there but let's go ahead and go through uh, some of the videos and other things that the USGS was able to capture. This is a video um, on yesterday on the 16th um, and you can see the gases there. This was in an area, although there were older flows, this actually did uh, erupt in a section that was all forested. So you can see some of the bluish uh, sulfuric gases coming out here and here's Nepal Crater coming into view here on the east. Uh, so again, not a, an ex expansive lava field coming out here, but enough lava to catch some of the trees on fire, burn some of the vegetation off. So this is one of our helicopter overflight videos from the USGS. Now you can see some of the devastation there in that little area. Uh, and then here again is Nepal Crater coming into view with this one. Uh, and then we'll jump to couple of the other videos here as well and get the full extent of kind of how things were looking there. So let's check out this one here. Um, again, not a lot of the incandescent glow. Presumably at the time they got by the time they got the helicopter up, the lava may have been stagnating quite a bit, not flowing as far, but you can still see, see, see some of that uh, black lava field in there, trees dying off, um, trees down in some places and then just the extensive outgassing uh, around the vent area there. And then there's again the Pau Crater coming into view. So that's looking to the east Puo over there in the distance. A um, couple more videos. I think there's, this is the last one and then we'll look at some photos. Yeah, and some annotations here from the USGS. So this is swinging around. Again, the very bluish gas, just very, uh, very blue, that sulfuric gas coming out along with the lava. So this is the looking along the fissure, but again, this was the short-lived one. This was the one that occurred um, Sunday evening for about an hour or so. And so pretty short-lived there. So not as much of the orange stuff to see. Uh, and then we have a couple of the photos here showing some of the uh, eruptive aftermath and Yeah, they were able to, like it says here, geologists observed freshly erupted lava of, on the Powell Crater. Yeah, uh, and it probably happened between 9 and 10. 
So some of the photos there from the USGS, we looked at the maps there. Let's go through the update really quickly. They've actually put out several since my last update yesterday, but let's start with the most recent one. Um, and this pertains to the resumption, this, this second phase of the eruption that started last night. The eruption on the Middle East rift zone of Kilauea, let's make that a little bit bigger for you, resumed this evening, September 16th at approximately 6 p.m. It's occurring within a closed remote part of the national park. Uh, they're still at level uh, orange and watch, mainly because there's no threat to infrastructure or human life. So um, that that would that is what would trigger them, uh, presumably, to put this in the red category. So even though we have an eruption and we do have some lava on the ground, there's really no threat to any people or property. Um, chain of Craters Road closed and downwind, and everything's restricted to the Middle East Rift Zone. Uh, the magma intrusion has been ongoing in the, this area near Makoapuhi Crater on the Middle East Rift Zone since the 14th. And then we had this very small eruption on the 15th that resumed uh, last night or th this evening. And you can actually see, um, yeah, and then they're just monitoring everything and they talk a little bit about the history. If you watch this loop here, um, it's right there. I'll let this go a couple times. So this is the last 24 hours. And so here it is. Uh, let's see where it starts here going up to so now it's current now this is yesterday morning Monday watch this area right here you see a little bit of gas right there a little outgassing that's it and then it gets dark and then the clouds lift enough and you see that quick flash that's the eruption there and then there's another little secondary glow there so let's see if we can catch those again it's it's a little tricky and it doesn't allow me to pause this but there's the steam outgassing there uh, it socks in with weather boom there's a faint and then you just look right here there's a faint glow right there um, you might have to watch that a couple of times. I'll make sure I put these in the video description. But this is the Pu'uo camera looking to the west. There's the plume from the, the Sunday night one. And then Monday, there's that flash when that eruption occurred. And then there's a little bit of a glow here. And then when we lose it, presumably, I think it's the weather. I think it's the clouds lowering. And then you can't see that distance uh, far away. So it's it's hard to say right now. I don't have any confirmation right now from any any of the sources I've able to use at this time if the eruption is still ongoing. I think once we get a little further into today, um, the USGS will get out there with, in the sunlight, uh, maybe with a helicopter, maybe on foot, and they'll be able to take a look and see if this eruption is still ongoing or did it maybe just only last for an hour or so. But I've got a busy day with classes and a climbing class later this afternoon, so that's why I thought I would get this update out now, even though there might be much better uh, and more accurate information later. But nonetheless, um, the big news here again is that the the eruption did take place. And we, you know, the USGS in their uh, update yesterday even said as much that there could be the weather and um, th they had their instruments were showing that eruption was possible, but a lot of times we can't tell that the eruption actually has taken place unless we have that uh, webcam or some visual observation that that documents that. Um, you can see all the seismic activity. Sometimes they'll, they'll get um, gas data that lets them know volcanic gases have come to the surface and that can be indicative of an eruption having taken place as well. Um, so there's a couple different updates you can look through if you want to there, but I'll dispense with reading all these to you. Uh, I, I did kind of go through this most recent one here. Um, Seismic data, pretty similar to what we've seen with the, with yesterday's update. So a lot of the earthquake activity, this is over the past, um, what am I at here, week or yeah, past week. So lots of earthquake activity leading up to this big event, primarily focused again in that Middle East Rift Zone. Shallow quakes is what we would be expected to be associated with magma movement from the summit storage region and injecting into the Middle East Rift Zone. Looking at the total number of earthquakes um, over the past week, you can see them ramping up here in blue, culminating here around the 15th, 16th when the eruption took place. And then they dropped down a little bit yesterday, but still at elevated levels, over 300 earthquakes yesterday. Today's data, obviously, um, not much yet because the day, you know, we're only a few hours into the day there in Hawaii. Uh, and again, everything kind of starts off with a bang with that 4.3 earthquake that really uh, was probably the, the, the big earthquake in the sequence that was part of the magma migration, magma movement in the subsurface down uh, from some of the summit storage areas beneath Kilauea into the Middle East Rift Zone.
Um, and you can see that with some of the deformation data too. I think we'll look at this one here in a bit, but this is a tilt meter up near the summit of Kilauea. So you can see September 11th, September 12th, 13th, 14th, pretty stable. Um, and not much movement and then boom there's this big spike and that's that magnitude 4.3 earthquake and then right after that you can see there is downward movement of this tilt meter and so that presumably is indicative of magma being withdrawn from the summit area as that magma started to move into the Middle East Rift Zone down into the, the East Rift Zone and so this earthquake likely was and probably associated earthquakes as well were responsible for opening up the pathways and the conduits for that magma to migrate and move down into the um, East Rift Zone. Um, earthquakes again, we can throw these on. We did this a little bit yesterday, but um, just one more time. So looking at, this is going to go from September uh, 11th through today. So here we are on the 12th, mostly in the Upper East Rift Zone. And when you really see these pop here in a second, this is on the 15th. So boom, there's that big earthquake and then all the related earthquakes as that magma is injecting into the Middle East Rift Zone. You can see how much more of a concentration there is in that little zone there. Uh, some people like the little 3D plots. We could throw that up real quick as well. Um, so you can kind of see how, where those earthquakes lie in three-dimensional space, looking at them from below ground. So here's the top view. And then here is, oh boy, now I've kind of screwed it up. Uh, the side view here. Let's go ahead and reset that so you can get it from the side view. So you can kind of see where those are taking place. Very shallow levels uh, with respect to the surface there and mainly along this more or less east-west trend that defines this part of the east rift zone. They're scattered but they're you know definitely along and associated with the uh, middle east rift zone. Um, we looked a little bit at the tilt meters. I think this was one we looked at. This is uh, a de just a 24-hour period, so this captures, you know, this this slope right here, and this is for the past week, uh, and then when you look at the past month at Kilauea Summit, you can really see it drop off. It's really pretty stable, and then boom, there's that earthquake, and then it just drops like a rock right there. Again, as the magma is leaving, uh, and some of the magma at least is leaving the summit region and moving into the Upper East Rift Zone. Uh, VOG has been a little bit of an issue, not like a huge hazard so far, but we can look at the uh, the VOG, has, the trade winds from the northeast have been carrying some of those gases down to the southwest uh, over maybe towns like Pahala, uh, Ocean View Estates, which is on the Mount Naloa's southwest rift zone, down towards the, the south tip of the island, um, but nothing too uh, drastic in terms of concentration just yet, but there's there's the forecast map for some of the VOG based on uh, the weather parameters and conditions there. So we'll have to see if that changes, if this uh, eruption puts out more uh, SO2 than, you know, if it's a bigger eruption with more outgassing, then you could see the VOG becoming a little bit bigger of an issue. Um, to wrap up real quick then, so we talked a little bit about the earthquakes and we've looked at some of these GPS stations in here as well. Again, I think the big theme here, looking at the last, this is two years of data at these GPS stations is, um, we've seen big changes the last two months since July or so of this year and through August and now into September, uh, we're probably entering a new phase of activity here in the Middle East Rift Zone. And just to give this some historical context, this is the first, so our eruption today, here's Pu'u'u'u again, Mount Ulu uh, eruption uh, that took place yesterday, or Sunday and Monday night, or it was pretty much in this little area right here, probably that little patch of gray. And, you know, it's worth noting that we haven't seen an eruption in this part of the Middle East Rift Zone since the 60s, essentially. You know, if we exclude the Pu'u'u eruptions, which are a little bit further to the, to the east here. And so, you know, are we maybe entering a new phase? We, if you look back at the history of these eruptions from the 60s and 70s, they began somewhat similarly with a lot of earthquakes, intrusion, small intrusions, and ultimately some small minor eruptions. You can see some of these very small eruptions here that just don't occupy a lot of ground or real estate. The 73 eruption over here, um, you know, there's this 1968 eruption that's super small, uh, March 65. 
And eventually, though, with these with this period of time, they did kind of get bigger and bigger. And they sort of culminated, I suppose, with the Mauna Ulu eruption, which went on for almost five years and ultimately did have enough output and lava that uh, the lava footprint you can see is much bigger and these flows actually went down to the coastline. So started with small eruptions of limited extent um, but eventually got created something much bigger uh, and then by the 80s it shifted over to Pu'uo'o and that went on for 35 years, big eruptions from that vent that went down to the coastline. So too early to say for sure if we're, gonna, if we're seeing something following that pattern um, but it is worth noting and it's interesting to look at what's happened there in the past as a possible you know model for what we might expect going forward so we'll have to see how this goes moving forward what we don't expect per se is um, you know so of course the big worry would be if we had movement down the east rift zone uh, and into this area down here where we have uh, homes and more infrastructure. And this, of course, was the area devastated by the 2018 eruption. But we're a long ways from that. What we what we would need to see is earthquakes um, picking up, moving down towards Pu'uo'o, and even further to the east, we would need to see some ground deformation and seismic activity moving in that direction. And right now, we're not seeing that. We're just seeing uh, everything pretty um, confined to, you know, between the upper east drift zone, the summit area, and down to just sort of the western flank of Pu'uo'o, that's sort of the place we're seeing right now. So for now, it looks like that's going to be the locus of activity, um, but we'll have to see moving forward how things progress. It's going to be uh, an interesting phase for sure to look at. So I'll keep you posted as things take place. And later today, there'll be I'll put some video links here up as well. You might want to check some of the webcams. Undoubtedly, the USGS will get some other information out later today, but I will not have time later today to provide another update. So I will try to either do that tomorrow or possibly later this week. But thank you for joining me. Thanks for your support of the channel. Uh, mahalo, and we'll catch you later.